Argyle sees Henry Cavill return to the big screen with what looks like to be a pretty good ensemble cast. It's directed by Matthew Vaughn, known for movies such as The Kingsman and X-Men First Class, so he has a pretty good track record. But there is a huge but with this movie, and that's what we're looking into, so let's go. This better be good. Welcome back to Pop Rages. I'm Danny Alex. At the end of this video, I'll give you my score out of 10, so stick around. I live in Los Angeles, and as a screenwriter, I'm developing an independent group of talented people here in Los Angeles to create movies outside of the broken studio system here in Hollywood. But if you'd like to support us in creating independent movies, hit subscribe. It would mean a lot to all of us. So getting back to Argyle. Agent Argyle. This movie can be described in fairly simple terms with words like sloppy and total mess. It's a movie that totally misses its mark on what it wanted to do and how it wanted to do it. I certainly hope you dance as well as you dress. There's only one way to find out. The only thing that anyone is going to remember about this movie is probably this picture. It's a good one. But there are major problems with Argyle, and I wonder if it's one of those situations where the words on paper just didn't translate very well to a live action movie. As I said, it's basically a sloppy mess that tries to do way too many things in one movie and storyline. It actually starts off pretty good, with the cast you wish you had all the way through the movie. Oh, I wish. Henry Cavill and John Cena make a surprisingly good team and seem to work well together while Dua Lipa does a fantastic job playing femme fatale villain Lagrange. But they're not the main cast of this story. It's kind of a bait and switch as the movie poster would make you think that these actors are the main ones in the movie. But they're not. These two are. And 45 minutes into the movie, you begin to wish that the plot centered around Henry Cavill, Cena, and Lipa, because the story that unfolds over the next hour and a half will have you rubbing your temples and shaking your head before the end. The beginning of this movie does a great job at piquing your interest. The first 15 minutes actually gives you that feeling that this is going to be a pretty good flick. But alas, with each 15 minute interval, it adds one to the stupid meter. By the end, this movie is a solid 10. Sounds kind of awesome. It spends two hours and 20 minutes going downhill at an amazingly constant and steady rate. Each new scene and story reveal manages to make you stop and wonder, was that clever or was it stupid? The right answer is actually a little bit of both. You see, this movie has an interesting idea at its core. It's the kind of story that has plot elements that could make for a very good movie, but it never gets to that place where you feel interested enough in what happens next, despite the endless parade of twists and story reveals. It bludgeons itself with lengthy and boring scenes riddled with exposition, explaining every new reveal and plot twist, most of which you figured out on your own. There are long and drawn out scenes that have nothing to do with the storyline, adding to the stupid meter as it moves the plot forward in an increase increasingly nonsensical way. The movie makes a new reveal on the last reveal that changed the reveal from the previous one. I mean, it all gets overwhelming and you actually forget what the point of the entire movie was. What are you doing? No, what are you doing? Matthew Vaughn used the same plot device three times with the main character, Ellie Conway, played by Bryce Dallas Howard. The old fall asleep and wake up to find yourself in a completely new place. One time she fell asleep in a car for 12 hours when she and Aiden Wilde played by Sam Rockwell, drove from London to the French countryside. I'm not kidding. She was sleeping for 12 hours. And they used the same plot device two more times just so the story could work out the way they needed it to. There was another one where Ellie was hanging on to Sam Rockwell as they parachuted off a bridge from a train. The next scene, she wakes up in a comfy chair in a living room, which makes no sense because she was completely awake in the scene before. So why she fell unconscious is completely baffling to me. Argyle is simply a sloppy movie that makes you forget what the main characters are even looking for and what the point of the whole movie is. Why am I here? It's jammed full of useless, unneeded scenes that were meant to create like a sophisticated mood, but only managed to grind the pace of this movie to a complete halt at times, making you lose interest and check your phone to see how long before it's over. By the end, we've reached a full 10 on the stupid meter, and it even goes past 10 and right to 11 a couple of times. These go to 11. The last 30 minutes, or basically the entire third act, is a complete disaster as everything Matthew Vaughn tried to do visually with this story 
fails miserably and comes across as over the top movie lunacy. It just doesn't work. What a mess, huh? There was a cat in this movie, Alfie. They even CGI'd him. Now, I'm not a cat person. I like dogs. So I'll just leave that as that, or I'll probably get into trouble with some of you cat people out there. The ice skating scene with the oil and knives was easily one of the dumbest scenes I have ever seen in a movie. Like I said, every 15 minutes, this movie added a point onto the stupid meter. And by the end, you are asking yourself, what the f did I just watch? Why am I here? Seriously, it's that bad. It's kind of sad because lost in the guts of this sloppy, messy movie is a story that would work really well. The movie made you think that Henry Cobble, John Cena, and Dua Lipa played a major role in the storyline, but they didn't. In fact, the majority of their scenes could be cut out of the movie and it would still work. Yes, we would lose some context, but they were only in the movie as a kind of flashback plot device. So their actions were completely inconsequential to the storyline. If the movie was based on those three characters like the first 15 minutes made you believe, then it would have been a much better movie. Henry Cobble is just a great actor and captures the attention of the audience. Matthew Vaughn should have spent more time to tighten up the screenplay to create a more focused story. Eliminate all the scenes that serve no purpose but to distract from the intended story and ease up on the ridiculous circus style ending. I mean, the last 30 minutes were just horrendous. It didn't work. I'm actually surprised that the studio greenlit this movie in the condition it was in. And I find it hard to believe that it tested well with audiences in this edit. But Apple was the production company and they have been known to allow directors to go a little loosey-goosey on the creative strings. Argyle is just a really bad movie that fails at almost everything it tries to do. Matthew Vaughn missed the mark with a story that was mired in sloppy scenes that only diverted the audience's attention from the main story. It had a $200 million budget and no doubt this will be the first major flop of 2024 and may lose well over 200 million at the box office. On a score of one to 10, I'm giving Argyle a five, just a five. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in our next video.